With Jorge Masvidal set to face Nate Diaz in a rematch, Leon Edwards in a recent interview with Brett Okamoto sent a message to Jorge Masvidal. Stop me the, stop me the. Let's fight, right? You see, street Jesus, you be a mess. Let's prove the case. You can't go out there and be it and go and fight, fight a guy just battered for three rounds, and then do it again and say you're the BMF. That's not how it works. So, stop being a step up. Nate Diaz reacted and posted this on his Twitter, saying, "You got effed up in the back for acting like you were tight. This fight is the same everywhere. In or out of the cage, don't get punked ever. That goes for Kabob also. You guys are in last place now. LOL." Jorge Masvidal reacted and posted a laughing emoji on an ESPN MMA Instagram post. Darren Till is the latest fighter to call out Nick Diaz. He posted this on his Twitter, saying, "If Nick Diaz wants to come back and scrap, who's the biggest star fight and best fight outside of the middleweight champ? F in me, that's who." Stipe Miocic on the Believe in Me podcast speaks on when he's looking to hang up the gloves. He also speaks on possibly going into boxing. You know how many fights it just depends. I always tell people I just admit I'm having fun or you know, I'm out and uh, I'm, I'm having fun. And um, so we'll see what that happens. But I'm not going to just keep fighting a fight for a paycheck. I'll never do mm. that. One thing I'll never do. And, but uh, yeah, when I'm going to train, I'll, when I when I retire eventually, I mean, I'll probably still be a fighter. I mean, depending on how I feel and you know, just, you know, like I said, I'm still having fun. So it's all matters. You would fight, fight, fight. Yeah, it's fight, fight. Yeah. I would love to box it, but you know, the chance I could, you know, you know, fight Josh or Fury or something like that'd be great. I think that'd be awesome. I know it's, you know, these are the tough calls, but I, listen, I think I can find a way. Always do. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, I would love, you know, to do it somehow, you know, sooner the better, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, you know, everyone's getting older here and I think uh, if I'm feeling great. I mean, I'm in the best shape of the world. I feel great. Um, yeah, you know, I just yeah, have a sit down thing with the UFC and see what they think. And, all that good stuff. So you, you know how it works. It's all it's all discussion. Ah, uh, 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 good. Good job. Uh, thank you. Nice song way to anticipate. Kenny Florin on the Annika Florin podcast gives his thoughts on Alistair Overeem's TKO win over Augusto Sakai. Yeah, listen, I, I sit here inspired. Um, it, it's amazing what Alistair Overeem has accomplished in his career. Um, of course, the UFC championship is the one belt that has eluded him, but um, I, I was just blown away by his ability to adapt. You could really see the veteran come out of him um, as each round came out. He was adjusting. He was playing smart. And I think, you know, aside from the Rosenstrike fight um, and maybe the Curtis Blades fight where he got finished in the round three, I think Overeem is most susceptible to be taken out early in a fight. Yes. Um, he usually comes out a little bit hesitant, not sure. And I think you typically see that from the more intelligent fighters. They might be a little bit more vulnerable early on because they are kind of computing and analyzing things and trying to see what their opponent is doing out there. It was particularly uh, difficult when you get a guy in Augusta Sakai who is a sneaky good athlete, who is fast, who kept blitzing him repeatedly and was catching him here and there. But the adjustment that Overeem made to um, avoid those shots defensively, clinch him up, utilize those knees, and eventually hit those takedowns really was the difference. That finish was as brutal of a finish as you will see. Dude, the first elbow was brutal. The second yeah. one was really bad. The third one would decapitate anyone under under 205 pounds. I mean, it, it would chop your damn head off. The yeah. cut was brutal. That elbow was nasty. I mean, Sakai's head hit that canvas so damn hard. Yeah. Overeem is a savage. The fact that he still has that kind of fight and brutality in him at 40 years old after how many years of fighting? You know, Same. from Japan to the United States. Sorry, I, I, I'm just blown away, John. <laughs> Backwards, don't lean backwards. 
That's it. And Alexander Rakic on the Luke Thomas show speaks on training with Mirko Krukop. Yes, uh, I mean, I did my whole camp in Zagreb, Croatia at the American top team. We had a wow. great facility there. We had a big UFC cage. We have a good sparring partner there. And me and my team uh, was two months there. And uh, Krokop, who lives in, in, in Zagreb, and he, he has his own gym there. Uh, and it was only like a, a dream came true for me you know um when i when i when i was training there and i talked to my coaches and i tell them man i need to visit krokop i need to train with him and i need to talk to him he is one of my idols you know i've been watching krokop since pride and i drop him a message and i would i ask him hey can i come to your gym can i train with you and and he says yes of course you can come and yes I came there, I trained with Krokop, I wrestled with him, I grappled, he was holding me pads, he gave me some instructions, some some advices, and this was like a, a dream came true, you know, I was like, I was, uh, before I went to the gym, I was a little bit nervous, you know, when you get excited, when you meet someone who you like a lot, and yeah, Krokop told me I can come whenever I want to his gym, I can train with him and in his gym, wow. I'm welcome and I'm happy and I'm gonna do it differently. What's up guys, getting ready to start my photo shoot with Avenue George Paris. Got the ice, got the peeps. These are shoes. Baden Jr. Best, best, photo, best photographer in the business. Hi. <laughs> Watch, what you guys think? What's up, everybody? King Triple C here. You guys welcome to this episode of Motivational Monday brought to you by Smart Cups, the world's first printed cups. Anyhow, let's get straight to it. The word that comes to mind today is honesty. The two things that don't allow somebody to get to where they want to get. You know what it is? It's a lack of confidence or they think they're better than what they really are. When I think of honesty, I think of failures. You know why? Because failures are indicators of what I need to work on. Again, you guys wanna be successful? Be honest with yourself.